absolutely out of the question. I can't celebrate our wedding anniversary with an ugly wife. Do you really believe you are worth that much? You are disgusting. Thank God I'm going on a business trip soon. I don't want to see your face. You are a daughter of a construction company, so find a nice place for me to stay. Well, I'm not counting on the help of your little family business that's on the verge of bankruptcy. Believing that I could rebuild my relationship with my husband, I had gathered my courage to ask him. My hope was cruelly crushed by his sneer. The gentle smile he gave me, saying he would take good care of me, was all a lie. His true intention was to be the husband of the CEO's daughter. Even though my father was the founder and CEO, his office was set up in his humble home. As soon as my husband found out, he thought he understood everything about my family business. Since then, he has been looking down at me with animosity. And on our wedding anniversary, he made it clear that he was spending an unforgettable night with the adulteress he loved. He left me behind in despair with a lecherous smile on his face. My family is in a construction business. I had been living with my parents and working as an admin assistant to support their business since I graduated from university. I didn't want to rely on them, so I decided to move out when my grandma passed away. I took over her house and started living alone. Afterward, I met my husband John through a friend. We were amazingly in true with each other in every way, including our values. We got married quickly in a favor. John and I started a new life together at my house. We spent happy days, elated at our first promise to celebrate our wedding anniversary every year. However, such joy was marred by the creaking house with stained walls. It's an old house. I let out a small sigh, remembering the conversation I had with my father the day before. He recommended that we rebuild the house for our new life. Of course, it wasn't that I didn't want to, but the house held too many memories of my beloved grandmother. A new life with my loving husband, or keeping the memories of my late grandmother. My mind swayed from day to day, and I couldn't come up with a definite answer. Just destroy this shabby house. Your family is in the construction business. Can't you even handle this kind of thing? You are just a small, inefficient, mediocre constructor from the countryside. Or maybe this is a suitable residence for such a country bumpkin? Every time the floor creaked, every time the house rumbled, he lashed out at me in frustration. When we first met, he was soft-spoken and cheerful. When I told him I worked for my father's company, he joked he was intimidated by my status, and we laughed together. He proposed to me with a burning face that he would take better care of me than my parents did. When he visited my parents' house for the first time after our marriage, I didn't know what he had been imagining, but he was shocked. The house was just ordinary, and the office was a small building on the same property. There were construction materials piled up in the yard. Since then, he always came up with an excuse not to visit my parents, and gradually began to make degrading comments to me. Later, I heard he told everyone at work that he was going to marry the daughter of a president of a company. I never told him that my family owned a big business. After that, the conversations between us declined dramatically. As a matter of course, we slept in separate bedrooms. If you get pregnant by mistake, I feel sorry for our unborn child. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror? Whenever we saw each other, he criticized my family background and appearance. Eventually, I began to avoid him as well. One day, I went shopping after work and ran home soaking wet from the unexpected rain. Shivering and cold, I went to the bathroom to take a shower. My feet felt the cool dampness of the bath mat, even though I had changed it in the morning. Perhaps it had not dried properly. 
I hesitated a little, but I wanted to get warm as soon as possible. I took off my wet clothes without thinking too much. However, um, I stiffened at the uncomfortable feeling that was not just my imagination. There was humidity and the water droplets were still on the shower curtain and walls. I cleaned the bathroom the night before. Even if I had forgotten to turn on the exhaust fan, it was hard to imagine that the room would remain so wet until late afternoon the next day. There was even a faint scent of shampoo that wasn't ours lingered. After I showered, I texted John to see if he had come home during the day. He replied with a simple, Of course not. Indeed, that shouldn't have been a normal case. He should have been at work at this hour, working hard. But then, I found another odd thing in the gap between the washing machine and the wall. His favorite watch. I was certain that I saw him leave the house this morning wearing it. I put on rubber gloves and went to the bathroom once more. I pulled a drain in the bathtub and then became sure of it. I knew it. There were strands of long hair, obviously not the same color as mine or John's. Also, a couple of limestones that appeared to be parts of nail art were stuck on the hair. I rarely got my nails done. Next, I went to John's bedroom and found the same long hair and the same scent. There was even a smudge of foundation and lipstick on the white bed sheets. That night, while suppressing nausea that came up, I looked into John's phone as he dozed off in the living room. I had been hiding in my room to avoid seeing him after dinner. He didn't expect me to come out. He dropped his cell phone on the floor and dozed off in a good mood after a few drinks. I couldn't sense a trace of caution from him. His cell phone was not even locked as proof. A little surprised, but taking advantage of the situation, I opened the messaging app. I immediately found the adulteress. I guessed that she was his ex-girlfriend from the conversations. She was the daughter of an affluent family and left him when she got engaged to another rich man. However, he couldn't get over her and contacted her. When she was preparing to move into a luxury apartment her fiancé's parents bought as a gift for the upcoming wedding. Her fiancé couldn't move in with her yet, and she was having trouble living alone in a new place. It seemed that John took advantage of the situation, and as if to compete with the happy tone of her messages, he boasted that he was about to marry the daughter of a construction company. I guess that he decided to marry me to get his story straight. How lame. He had no scruple to take advantage of me just to show off, and I was taken for a ride without realizing it. I felt really stupid. I threw his phone on the floor and went back to my room and cried out loud. I couldn't think straight and didn't even want to think about it. Our relationship was in an ice age. But I hadn't given up on us, and I couldn't be calm about it. I just kept crying like a child until my tears dried up. I was so tired that I fell asleep before I knew it. When I woke up, I heard the sound of John closing the door on his way to work. I jumped up in a haste and cooled my swollen eyelids off. I contemplated again about what I wanted to do. All I could recall was the image of John who was so kind to me. I couldn't believe that it was all an act. He could have easily divorced me when he found out that I wasn't what he expected but he didn't. I thought there was still a chance for a fresh start. That day, I made his favorite stew and waited for him to come home. I normally made it from scratch and he complimented me that it was the best. I had fond memory of him eating it with a infectious smile on his face. When he came home, he didn't say anything directly to me, but he ate it happily. Hey, it's our anniversary this weekend. Do you remember our promise? Why don't we go out together? It's sad and lonely to live like this without being able to talk to each other. We don't have to do anything special. I just want to be with you. 
I want to see the same things with you and have conversations. I gathered up the courage to tell him. I wasn't sure if it was nervousness or fear, but tears welled up in my eyes. I looked into his face as I wiped them away, believing that he was going to take me seriously. But, ooh, you're gross. A reclusive pig suddenly asks to be with me on our anniversary. What's so special about you that you deserve to be celebrated? An anniversary is only worth spending money on if you have feelings for each other. Otherwise, it's just another day, nothing special. There is no anniversary with you at all. I don't remember our stupid promises. Stop saying weird things all of a sudden. I feel nauseated now. He glared at me with disdain, as if he were looking at trash. Then, he stormed out on the pretext of going out to buy beers. I retreated to my room and cried again in devastation. That night, he was again carelessly lying in the living room. I wondered if he enjoyed mocking me in his head as he got drunk. I looked at the messages on his phone and found that he had a reservation for a fancy dinner with his adulteress on the day of our anniversary. Ironically, the same day seemed to be the anniversary of their relationship. Everything about our marriage was a mistake. There was never love on his side in this marriage from the beginning. I realized that I was just a misjudged status for him, and it was nothing more than a tool to maintain a minimum level of life. I crumbled down on the spot where he slept peacefully beside me. I trembled without tears. I'm leaving next week for a month on a business trip, so check out the short-term apartments for me. Your family is in the construction business, so you can at least get information on good properties through your connections, right? But then, maybe a business on the verge of bankruptcy doesn't have that kind of power. It was almost December. He was still the same as ever, and after showing an enthusiastic display of sarcasm, he left for work. A month-long business trip. Normally, I would have been upset with the last-minute notice, but I no longer had the energy or emotion to do so. I already knew that the trip was nothing more than a lie, but to make the last memories with his adulteress before her marriage. Checking his phone became a regular occurrence. I felt guilty and disgusted with myself, but at the same time, it was providing me with useful information. Have a good trip, good luck. I saw him off with an innocent smile, as if I knew nothing the following week. When he was out of sight, I made a phone call. Hello? Yes, please get it going from today. And then, I rushed back to my room to get ready. I had been waiting for this moment. I expressed my impatience and ran out of the house in high spirits. One month later, while I was at work, I received a call on my cell phone repeatedly. I left it alone as I was busy, but even though it was on vibration, it was still annoying. I asked my parents for permission to step out and answer the call. Yes? What the hell, you pig? What's going on? I came back and found the house was gone without a trace. The land's on sale too. Explain what the hell is going on. John was yelling so loudly on the other end of the phone that I didn't even need to put it on speaker. Well, you told me to get rid of the house as soon as possible. That's why I asked my father. I don't know if this is supposed to be my privilege. Why are you complaining when I did what you wanted? I answered him nonchalantly, suppressing my laughter while imagining him being furious and panicked. Don't bullshit with me. No matter how hard you ask, there is no way a small business like yours can do this in just one month. Besides, the sign has the name of a major company around here as a contact. I don't see how a company like this would do a small no-name business a favor. Who is behind this? Don't try to fool me. I told you, I asked for it. You took one look at my parents' house and assumed that it was a small and mediocre. Have you actually done your research on my family business? 
I certainly didn't say it was big, but neither did I say it was a family-owned small business. He seemed to hear the bells in his head and hastily searched for something on his phone, probably about the company on the sign. He was so stunned that no words came out of his mouth. No wonder. The company's website showed a picture of my father as a CEO. We are a construction company, but we also run various related businesses. Not only our home construction office, but demolition and building are part of it. Recently, inflation caused a decline in business, so they've all been happy to help me demolish and sell lots. You know the demolition took only a week? It was the last big job of the year for them. And the land was sold at a pretty good price. I thought of it as the last Christmas gift for my beloved grandma. I was grateful to receive it. I had been agonizing about it for a while, but in a way, I think you helped me make the decision. Thank you so much. John was still speechless despite my cheerfulness. I couldn't see his face, but he must have been pale and sweating profusely. Don't tell me you threw away all my stuff. My computer, my work files, damn it. Do you have any idea what you have done? He was half sobbing and began to worry about what happened to his belongings. No way, I'm not that heartless. My stuff went to my parents' house and yours went to the right place. It's a little early. But it's my Christmas gift to you. Please accept it. Oh, by the way, the boxes are supposed to arrive today. The sender's name is yours, and I've written down the address. I assume they would come asking about it. I'm sure you guys will be able to talk it over and come to an agreement. Where the hell did you send them? He trailed off. He must have been so panicked that he forgot to hang up the phone with me. As I expected, and as he didn't, the recipients of the package had appeared. Can you please explain what's going on? Oh! The man, to John's horror, was the fiancé of his adulteress. I had sent his boxes to their condo. I had already confirmed the address from John's messages. I also took pictures of him and his adulteress at the hotel and their condo and sent them together with the boxes. The fiancé's family was well known locally, and of course the picture was sent to them as well. On the other end of the phone, John and his adulteress were pointing fingers at each other. The fiancé who witnessed this was outraged. Their engagement was called off, and possibly a court case was pending. When the storm passed and John realized that he was still on the phone with me, he was furious and started cursing at me. You are trampling on my life, you bitch! I'm going to ruin your life too! You are worthless! I will make you regret destroying my life for the rest of yours! You deserve everything you got! How dare you say that without even thinking about what you did! I won't forgive you ever! This is definitely the end! I hung up the phone on him and then immediately called his work. I also found traces of his wrongdoings at work while I was checking his phone. Next, I called his parents and told them everything. I refrained from doing all this in case he made a sincere apology, but I had no reason to anymore. John was fired from his job that day, and his furious parents disowned him. Overnight, he lost his job, his house, his wife, and his family. I was sure he wasn't able to stay in the town any longer. After that, we officially divorced. Of course, I negotiated a large sum of alimony. His adulteress was also abandoned by her furious parents. Her ex-fiancé brought her to court for swindling, and she was charged with huge compensation. They brought shame to the son of a wealthy family, and tarnished the new luxury condo with their adultery. The amount of money he demanded must have been nothing compared to that of an ordinary citizen like me. John and his adulteress, who lost their place in each other's lives, supposedly made a fresh start in a shabby apartment somewhere. 
A man with a career scarred beyond repair, and a naive young lady together as a couple, they will most likely have a hard time making a decent life for themselves. Rumor has it that they are having fierce arguments every day and are just living to pay their debts. I, on the other hand, bought a new house with a sale of the land. I try to live a modest life without the help of my parents and spend each day to the fullest. The failed marriage makes me realize that I'm not a good judge of people. I was quickly caught up in passion and wasn't able to see clearly the true nature of the person. I have reflected on my naivete. I was indeed hurt, but I won't waste this experience. I'm determined to grow and become a better person. I want to cultivate the ability to see people and become confident. I set a big goal for the rest of my life and made a wish for the sunrise.